So last part of the uh, normal distribution, and we want to, in this case, work on an inverse lookup or an inverse normal distribution. In other words, in our previous examples, we have been given x values, right? This is our x-axis. We've been given values on this and asked to find the area under the curve. And of course, area is probability, right? Well, this time, it's a little bit different. This time, we're going to be given the area. In other words, we're going to be given the probability. And we're going to be asked to find the x values. OK, now, this particular problem, hopefully it also rings a bell with our interquartile range, the IQR. Um, you know, remember that businesses like to focus on the middle 50% of their business because it's where a lot of our customers are, it's where a lot of our transactions are, and uh, less so on the fringes, right? OK, so the problem starts off the same. It's the deli counter, and we're following a normal distribution. And again, the typical order, we know that means the mean is 1 pound, and the standard deviation is still 0.25 pounds. Now, this time, the manager wants to stock her inventory to serve the middle 50% of her customers. So the point here is she's kind of wondering, um, where do people, you know, how much lunch meat do they normally order? And keep this in mind. I'm just going to add to the example. You may walk up to the lunch meat counter and say, I'm going to order a pound of lunch meat. But slicing is not an exact science. So maybe you get 0.9 of a pound of lunch meat. Maybe you get 1.1 a pound of lunch meat. And so the manager is just looking at uh, this continuous normal distribution, right? And she wants to stock her inventory to serve the middle 50%, middle 50% of her customers. She wants to know, what are the two values? How many pounds define the lower end and the upper end of the middle 50%? So she temporarily labels those values. Now, a lot of students get confused on this part because they don't take the time to draw the picture and say, look, I don't know this value. Let's call it x1. I don't know this value. Let's call it x2. In that way, I can use it in my calculations. and. You know, if it's just one of my unknowns, probably figure out eventually what that x value is, right? A little bit of algebra here is what I'm going for. OK, so got an important note here. It says the 50% area is in the middle. In other words, it is centered about the mean. It's centered in this, as I've got it shown here, this yellow area. To avoid confusion, you draw the picture and label it. Remember that your calculator in Excel returns areas from a point to negative infinity. In other words, it's not just going to magically produce this area in the yellow. OK, now let's just kind of talk through this. And I've asked you a couple questions about this in your instruction packet. But what we're saying, and, and really what I already have uh, labeled here, let me get a, a two-sided arrow, is that this area here is 50%. Now remember that we just said it was centered. And so I want you to think about that because you know some of problem solving is just taking the time to write down what you already know, but you don't realize that you know, right? OK, if the mean is dead center, and that's part of our rules for a normal distribution, then I'm going to label something else because what it means is that from this point to here is what? Do you know what that percentage is? I, I'm trying not to distract you by clicking around here a little bit. But that means if this distance, let me put it right here. Oops, I've actually already got that labeled a little bit. If the whole yellow area is 50%, then we can all, and, and half of it is to the left of the mean, and half of it is to the right of the mean, then what we know is that this is 25%. Isn't that right? You see what I'm saying there? OK, I'm going to blow your mind here. Stay with me. What else do we know? Well, we know, let me get my marker here, that the area under the entire curve is what? Isn't the area under this entire thing? 100%, if I was expressing this as a probability, I would say as 1. And if the area of the entire thing is 100 and the mean is at the center, 
then we also know that the mean is dead center of that 100%. So we know another value. We know that this is 50%. Now, I've thrown a lot of percentages out here, so let me just kind of pause for a minute and review this. In the problem, they tell us that the manager is interested in the middle 50%. That's the area that's color-coded in yellow here. Okay? They gave us the area. This was a given. And area is the same as probability. Probability is area. So that's the yellow. Right? They told us it was in the middle. From that, we know that 25% of it is over here. 25% of it is over here. What else do we know? We know the area under the entire curve is 100%. We know that this is symmetrical. So by symmetry, if I divide this curve, you know, right, if I folded it along the mean, this would be 50%. Well, now let's look at a couple of these. See this arrow here? It's 50% from the mean to negative infinity, and it's 25% from here to here. What does that tell me? about the area from here to negative infinity. Well, if this is 50% and this is 25%, well, then I guess this area, let me squeeze it in under here, is also 25%. Now, let's think about this. Each time we have calculated the area underneath the curve, I've explained that Excel, just like your calculator, expects the area or delivers the area from the point to the left. So now when it's asking for area, it obviously wants the area from that point to the left. We've just determined that the area to the left of x1, the area below, is 25%. That's what I'm asked for here is my first value. Now, I am talking in percentages, but we are dealing with and working with probabilities. So I need to make sure I type that as a probability. Now, let's think about x2. I need to know the area under the curve from x2 to negative infinity because that's one of the values I'm being asked for. Well. This yellow area is 50%. This area is 25%. 25 plus 50 is 0.75. You might have to think about this for a little bit. It's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle, and you have to move the pieces around until you get what you need. Part of this is understanding what it is you need. You need the areas from the point to the left, in other words, to negative infinity. Now, from the problem, and as we've uh, discussed before, the mean is 1. The standard deviation is 0.25 pounds. What we want to determine now is the x1 value. What is this value? This would be what we would call a reverse lookup. What do I mean by reverse lookup? Well, what I mean is that in the past, we've been given the x value and asked to look up the probability. This time, we're given probabilities and asked to solve the x for the x values. We can call this a reverse lookup or an inverse lookup. So I'm going to click on my insert function. If you typed nothing more than a normal distribution, you could also type inverse uh, lookup, that kind of thing, you would see these functions that deal with a, a reverse lookup or an inverse lookup. So I'm going to choose norm inverse. Uh, this one works the same with the uh, dot in there, so either one is fine. The probability, okay, and you can see here, now remember it expects it to negative infinity, so that's this 0.25, the mean, the standard deviation. Okay, now there's a panic moment here, and I'm letting you digest this, where you say, but wait, 0.83%? That can't be right. You didn't calculate a percentage. You calculated pounds, because x is pounds, okay? We're going to do this again, exact same thing for the x2 value. Probability, this time 0.75. That's where your probability 
So I need the mean, and I've put the mean in, and standard deviation. So what, do we, what does this mean? What it means is, let me uh, add some values here. Actually, let me go up here so as not to confuse you. Is it too late? Have I already confused you? I'm going to uh, add these values in so that you can see what, what we're talking about. What we've just calculated is the values on our x-axis, right? So now we know that the middle 50% of all the orders at our deli counter are pounds of lunch meat between 0.83 pounds and 1.17 pounds, okay? Now, some of you may be familiar with doing a reverse lookup manually, and that's a good place to start. And when you do the manual process, you use your... Um, your chart and you look up your Z values and you notice that Excel does not need to calculate the the Z value. It of course has those tables built in and, and can kind of skip that step. So if you're looking for that Z value, um, it's just simply not needed in this particular case. Think about this. I realize this might be a lot to digest. Hopefully this exercise will help you walk through it. Feel free to stop, rewind the video, and replay the pieces that you need until it, it makes sense. Good luck.